It's time that we actually hold our governments and our systems accountable for killing us, for um, creating environments where we can't be in our optimal health. I grew up thinking that being poor was my fault and my mother's fault. That because my mother was a single mom, it was her fault that we were sometimes unable to eat. And that's on purpose. It's on purpose that people who are most marginalized, people who are um, poor, who are mostly impacted by state violence, to think that being killed by a cop was our fault. Uh, they tell us that, right? We have a crisis of divesting from poor communities, black communities in particular, and reinvesting um, into these communities with police, jails, courts, prisons. What we've seen over the last four years has been a deep resurrection of the civil and human rights movement in this country. In the 60s, they didn't have social media. Um, they didn't have a militarized police force. Um, they didn't have a prison industry that was 2.3 million people. They're dealing with different circumstances. Racism is still the same. Capitalism is still the same. Sexism is still the same. And so what we've seen is the birth of a racial justice movement. No justice, no peace. They, they interrupted the speech and he wasn't able to, to talk. Can you apologize to black people for mass incarceration? Well, can I talk? I do not think that black people and um, other um, marginalized communities have an obligation to the Democratic Party. In fact, I think we have an obligation to what's going to save our lives. We have an obligation to challenging neoliberalism. And I think what has often happened with the Democratic Party, uh, that party has chosen corporations over uh, humanity. And uh, while I often still vote Democrat, both parties for us had been parties that had historically um, been uh, unhelpful to black communities. Snipers opening fire in downtown Dallas during a rally against the fatal police shootings of black men in Louisiana and in Minnesota in recent days. The snipers hit 11 police officers, at least five of whom are now dead. The killing of the Dallas officers becomes a really pivotal moment for Black Lives Matter. It's really the moment where our organization is launched and to be called a terrorist organization. You are not a fan of that movement? Not at all. It's uh, a destructive movement in my opinion. Michael Johnson was really clear that he wasn't a part of a movement, that he did this on his own terms. When we were, as Black Lives Matter, very clear that our movement was about peace, nonviolence. In fact, we were calling out law enforcement that was killing us. And so we were saying we actually need a peaceful country. You're gonna hear it once. All lives matter. Many people who've said all lives matter really have meant white lives matter. We started to hear presidential candidates, right, on one side say black lives matter because they were forced to really contend with that. Yes, they do, and I'm gonna talk a lot about that in a minute. And the other side buckled down and continue to say all lives matter. The anti-Roy Moore campaign was huge for us. Black women um, voted against Roy Moore, not because they necessarily wanted the other guy. Uh, they voted against Roy Moore because they knew that would be better for the people of Alabama, and to be frank, better for the rest of the country. And I think we could do it again in 2020. Whenever people are not getting the things that they deserve, and we can see this across the world, look at Egypt, people are gonna rise up. You can only um, put your, the boot on someone's neck for so long before they try to get it off their neck.